Dreams of a bundle of the same recipe and name. Oh, you ain't no one else to be your name. Desire. 
it depends on what kind of love also. Like um, uh, in our English vocab, love means so many different things. But the Greek vocab says that there are three different kinds of love. Like just keep it short and sweet and simple. Um, it talks about this uh, love that um, uh, generates uh, attraction, like physical attraction, right? And if you notice that right from the time we are small, it's, we are always searching for something. Our hearts are made for that, to search, and to search for love, actually. You know, music, for example. We love music and we want to gratify ourselves with this kind of idolatry. It's, you create an idol in your life and you, you, you keep doing um, that, that thing over and over again to satisfy that need in your heart. Actually, it's called the void. When man separated from God, it created this void in our hearts. And we want to fill up this void, you know, by hook or by crook, by anything, anything that pleases and satisfies our body. We want to fill up that void desperately. And so some people call it, you know, uh, love, which has to be towards that love, which is God. But how many people know about that? Because for them, they see love, mostly, you know, people fight for this love, for the physical attraction, and no one can deny that, right? That we, um, we have this in our nature, it's in our nature to be physically attracted to someone which is called eros love. That's an erotic love. And who can deny that? Even a small kid will have those feelings. Right? Why do you laugh? That's true. It's true. That this is our nature and there's nothing bad about it because God created us. If we didn't have those feelings, we wouldn't reproduce today. Not that everyone is going with that intention. But I'm saying is, this kind of love, the erotic love, is conditioned, okay? It's you make me feel good, I'll make you feel good. And so that's why, you see, it's only for a limited time. It's, it lasts, it doesn't last like eternal. It has no eternity in it. It has conditions to it. That only if you make me feel good, then I'll make you feel good. So that's called the eros love. And then we have the next love between friends and between brothers and sisters and the family. It's the female love. Kind of love between uh, friends. How long does that love last? You know, the moment they fight with you, then you know, you're no more my friend. <laughs> so that love is again conditioned, limited. And then comes the third kind of love, which is agape, which Chris just now spoke about, which is called unconditional love. So we can see Unconditional versus the conditioned love, that which is the arrows in the um, but the agape love is unconditional love. Even though you are bad to me, I will still love you unconditionally. You may think that parents um, have that kind of love. Do you think parents have that kind of love? Do you think parents love you unconditionally? Yeah. You think so? No. Okay. There's there's conditions. Exactly. So then they, you said it yourself that even our parents, you know, even they have condition. Their love is condition. And that's why there's only one direction to turn. You know, right from the beginning, we should know about this unconditional love. It's so pure that this love, like when Chris was singing today, it was as if he tasted that love. You know, because you can't, uh, most of the time I heard love songs like to a person and I know how that feeling is that you really mean it and you get into those emotions and you're singing it with somebody in your mind. But when you're singing God's songs, who else you can think of but God, you know, and have that deep relationship with Him and to feel and taste His love because He said that once we taste that love, you know, you go running after it because it's so pure and it's so beautiful that no human being can ever love us the way God loves us, so unconditionally. And the beauty of this is once this love comes into your heart, 
It helps you in your relationships. So your love towards the right people, you know, uh, when you have this, when you have to have the eros kind of love, for example, you'll have it at the right time. God wants you to have it. You know, otherwise it's always your fleshly desire, you're gratifying it, take it from me. It's always that if you are not experiencing your hero's love at the time of marriage, that is with your married, with the person you're going to marry for sure, then the other love that you are experiencing is not from God. It is your fleshly desire that you need to gratify so you will do things that is against God to gratify this flesh. And what happens in the eyes of God is, you know, you become sinful and that separates you from God. So it's very, you have to be very careful when you're choosing your partner, especially now you guys have graduated from school, you're you know, going to go on a new path now, new life, they're waiting for you, young minds and young guys going out there to face this world, you know, how exciting that is. And the first thing you want to do is to have a relationship because this is how we are made. We need to have a companion, we need to have, um, you know, someone to, to spend time with. We are not, uh, we are social beings. So we need a partner, we need someone who can listen to us, who, who can share our emotions, our dreams, you know. We need that really bad in our lives and so we are always hunting. We are always having that hunting uh, nature, that animal nature to hunt, hunt for someone who could share, you know, our lives with us. And God, what God did was he created Adam and he created Eve to be a helper, to be, to give company, you know, to the, to uh, Adam. So this is what he created us uh, for. And if we mess around, you know, we, if we mess around and, and abuse his, uh, this love, what he made us experience, we are in for a lot of trouble. So we, we join in with the devil. We join in with the devil and we forego all the beauty that God wants to give us. Because God wants to find us that pure love will be faithful to you. What happens is when you get into these relationships, there's no one who's going to be faithful to you. They are going to, you know, go behind your back and that's how sin, sin hunts you down. Sin, sin gets you to do all those um, uh, uh, distorted, they distort the purity of love. So that's a danger over there and even with friends also when you you know want to experience love, something happens in between and it breaks. But what keeps us safe in our relationships is that only one pure love, which is our love. And once you receive this love from God, then everything he takes care of, everything, all your relationships with your friends, where you have no hatred and enmity in your heart, but you have forgiveness and love in your heart. And you'll find this partner, you'll find this partner, God will choose this partner who will be faithful to you. And you don't have to, uh, you know, um, dominate this person with rules and regulations and that kind of an attitude. But there'll be so much of freedom in your love that you'll be able to love so unconditionally that love has the power to make that person submit to you. Because you want someone to submit to you because that's our nature. I want him to submit to me. <laughs> he wants me to submit to him, right? So that's a constant tug of war. But if God comes in between our lives, then both of us will submit to each other because love has the power, pure love, agape love. Not your eros love and your fear your love and all that has no power. But the agape love has the power to make your partner submit to you. Isn't that so beautiful? I got a small clip over here to just to show you guys how powerful God's love is. So with that we'll end. I hope you're going to enjoy this clip.
But you don't succeed When you get what you want But not what you need When you feel so tired But you can't sleep Stuck in rivers And the tears come streaming down your face When you lose something you can't replace When you love someone but it goes to waste Could it be worse? Lights
though you made so many mistakes, but still you find someone forgiving you. And you're like, who are these people? You know, how can they forgive? At once it should click in your mind that there's something powerful in forgiveness. To forgive someone is so powerful that it comes only from God. And that's why it helps us to live longer, and be happy, and be smiling all the time, and enjoy our lives. And, the, and it takes unconditional love to have all those things. To enjoy life, to be happy, you know? And um, that's from our God. So let's drop, you know, what we are doing and where we are heading to, and only focus on getting this agape love. It's unconditional love. Once we have it, it's like having that power in your hand, you know, ready to go out there and conquer the world.
somebody better than you because I'm not. We all fall short from the glory of God, but pretty much I am here as a... Feel your